Designs for Strong Minds is a program that recognizes the brain is plastic and modifiable at any age. Designs for Strong Minds appreciates that there can be rehabilitation after traumatic brain injury or enhancement. When I first began doing this work, I felt that my job was to reverse engineer to find out what the really brilliant people could do and make it available to the rest of us. It's not fair. We should all be able to do this. So if I meet someone and I, I, I recognize that their processing style is a little different, the next thing I want to do is to create the opportunity for other people to appreciate and to learn and to include that processing style in their toolbox of problem-solving skills. In order to habituate new patterns of behavior at, you know, an expert level, you have to combine different skill sets as well. So it demands tremendous numbers of hierarchically organized, complex puzzles. This exercise forces someone to look left to right their um, graphics that communicate in different ways, their graphics that try and trick you into seeing something that you didn't see before. So there may be visual closure exercises, there may be spatial exercises, visual memory, visual imagery. There is an intention, there is a meaning to the exercise, and that meaning transcends to many other opportunities for the individual to use this skill in everyday life, in academic situations, in professional life. If we have an individual who has had a mild to moderate traumatic brain injury, like a concussion, they have a difficult time looking at something aiming their eyes at something, following an object. The two eyes are not teamed. So one eye may move at a different rate, one eye may see at a different place. Um, the visual systems are very complex, but all of these, these little differences really affect processing, cognition, socialization, participating in sports, going back to work, and even making a decision. I am preparing everyone with the skills to be in charge. Uh, to catalyze creativity, you need visual imagery. To catalyze creativity, you need a high propensity for risk-taking. To catalyze creativity, you have to accept failure as part of your eventual success. And there is no one who's succeeded who hasn't had a failure. But there are plenty of people who don't want failures who never reach any kind of success because they have a low propensity for risk taking. I have a very high propensity for risk taking. I'm not afraid. I started doing this work in 1983. And in 1983, People thought I was crazy. We've come such a long way. It's so exciting 